Good morning. Hope you're up bright and early. We're looking here at he Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 1 to 7, and now we go to the Ammonites. Do God's mercies extend to the Ammonites? Let's read these verses 1 to 6. Against the Ammonites, thus says the Lord, Has Israel no sons? Has he no heir? Why then does Milcom inherit God and his people dwell in its cities? Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will cause to be heard an alarm of war in Rabbah of the Ammonites. It shall be a desolate mound, and her villages shall be burned with fire. Then Israel shall take possession of his inheritance, says the Lord. Wail, O Heshbon, for Ai is plundered. Cry, you daughters of Rabbah, give, gird yourselves with sackcloth. Lament and run to and fro by the walls, for Milcom shall go into captivity with his princes and his priests together. Why do you boast in the valleys, you or your flowing valley, O backsliding daughter, who trusted in her treasures, saying, Who will come up against me? Behold, I will bring fear upon you, says the Lord God of hosts. From all those who are around you, you shall be driven out, every one headlong, and no one shall gather those who wander off. But afterward I will bring back the captives of the people of Ammon, says the Lord. Now, like the Moabites, the Ammonites are descended from Lot. You can go back to Genesis and read about that. To find Ammon, find a map, go north from Jerusalem to Jericho, and then turn east and go a little north, and you'll soon wind up in Ammon. Now, the Bible describes several armed conflicts between Ammon and the people of Israel. They weren't exactly the friendliest of neighbors. And like the other neighbors, the Ammonites were worshippers of their favorite deity, Milcom. Moab felt uh, safety in the heights. The Ammonites felt safety in their little valleys and wadis and crevices that they hung out in. Now, everyone's accountable to God. God judges his own people and all other people. Yes, there are differing degrees of knowledge, but all people are human, and they're all morally accountable, and every one of us is made in God's image. We all are people he's looking to bring along into the kingdom. Every single human being he wants in his kingdom. Every single human being is designed to worship God and find our fulfillment in him. So here again, what do we find? Well, at the end of this judgment, we see it kind of like we just saw in the other one. Uh, God is going to bring the Ammonites out of captivity, some of them. Which ones? Well, of course, this is conditional. Are the hearts of these Ammonites open to the true God? Or are they just going to worship Milcom and go on through their day very blindly? Are they determined to fight against the God of the Hebrews? Now, we're told here that the false god Milcom will go into captivity just like the false god Shemosh did for the Moabites. Hey, friend, when the god you worship is carried away captive, it's time for some reassessment. Either, you know, the god you worship isn't the true god, or... Maybe you worship a false god, and or you're at fault, you're not meeting the conditions. Of course, there's only one true God, the God of heaven and earth, Yahweh, Jehovah, Adonai, the Lord of the Hebrews. What's interesting is that many people do not reassess. They just carry on in the same old track, and they're just as predictable as night and day. Most people just, it's easier to just double down and carry on the way you're going, and then you don't grow at all. But every one of us seek for increased spiritual interest. God can give us a stronger desire for good, solid spiritual interest. God delights to give that, whether you're a Hebrew or a Greek, whether you are a Moabite or an Ammonite, whether you're an American. Hey, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, please give us a heart to seek you. Please give us a desire to grow spiritually. Help us, Lord, because on our own, we are, we are disastrous. Lord, with your influence and the work of your spirit in our hearts, we can be true and right. Oh, bless us and build us, Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible tells us to seek the Lord while he can still be found. I believe we're still at a time where we can find him. Let's continue to seek him. Go out into the kingdom today, serving the Lord your God.